All right. Uh, Earth is actually full of uh, places which are less friendly for life than, for example, Warsaw. There are places where uh, we have very high temperature, very high pressure, or, for example, there's no water. But yet life exists in almost all of these places. And uh, it's not only because uh, nature had plenty of time to invent a solution uh, to deal with such circum circumstances, but also life is quite robust and easily adapts to changes. And uh, nature, uh, species have many different strategies how to deal with uh, changing circumstances. And the easiest one is uh, to live. And living means actually uh, creating space for another species to come in uh, because nature doesn't like void. Uh, another idea is to hide. I don't know if you see. Yeah. Uh, this white spot in the middle is a, my, uh, is a microbial cyst and uh, microorganisms can hide in such, uh, in such shell for hundreds of years and when the good old times uh, come back again, uh, they start to grow uh, without any problem. Uh, uh, species can also adapt uh, by modifying their own genome. Uh, this one is known to everybody attending Polish school. You can borrow good solution from somebody else. And this, uh, in nature, often it goes through small pieces of DNA, like in here. Uh, they, for example, in, in case of bacteria, they encode uh, resistance to antibiotics. Uh, the last thing is uh, cells uh, can, species can cooperate. Uh, for example, uh, if a single cell cannot do any, uh, cannot do any of the, uh, cannot, for example, hide, uh, it can join several other cells, including from other species, and they together can build a protective structure, like more or less in here, that protects them from uh, chemicals, antibiotics, uh, ultraviolet, or, or whatever. But uh, honestly, this list is hardly inspiring we apply all of these strategies uh, in our uh, everyday life, maybe except of modifying our own genome. We don't do that yet. Uh, technology and culture is our genome, and these are modified when the circumstances change. Uh, but I think it's about the time to start thinking about borrowing from nature uh, uh, in some other way. And uh, example of such paradigm shift uh, can be taken, for example, from slime molds. Slime molds, uh, in Polish it's śluzowce. Uh, yeah, very good name. Uh, uh, these are uh, small unicellular organisms. They look like, like fungi, but actually they uh, exhibit quite unusual properties. They, uh, they form this kind of structure or something like this, or even like this. Some of them actually can move through the field. And uh, the, they exhibit a number of unusual features, uh, but the cool thing is that uh, there's no governor, nobody tells them what to do. There's no leading cell. If a couple of cells join together, none of the cells is the leader, and there's no master plan. And for example, if you put a slime, this is map of England. If you pull the slime mold in place of London and food in place of other cities, a slime mold, when it starts to search for food, actually in the middle, uh, the last one and here, it can actually represent quite accurately roads in England. Thousands of uh, hours of work of English engineers rep uh, reproduced quite accurately in two hours by a slime mold. And actually, this is not intelligence. Uh, the truth is that th this, this is a system which is self-organizing and adaptive. And I think it's about the time to think about technology uh, uh, in the same ways, whether, whether our technology can be self-organizing self and uh, adapting. And I think it's about the time to uh, stop 
taking solutions like the ones I've mentioned at the beginning, uh, but start to take from nature a design. Thank you.